Well, good afternoon, Redeemer Bible Church. President Trump has just concluded his press conference. He and other experts have asked us to be very vigilant over the next 15 days to try to slow down the spread of the coronavirus. And for us, we want to come alongside that and say absolutely. We want to do everything that we are asked to do by our government. We want to submit to the government in line with God's word, Romans 13. 1 Peter chapter 2, tell us to do that, to be good citizens. And so we're going to do that. Part of what they've asked us to do and what, and what we're really asking you to do is to submit to the part where it says no meetings of more than 10 people. And that's going to obviously put a strain on all of our lives, but particularly puts a strain on us here at Redeemer. But we, we want to make sure that we are compliant with that. And so these rapidly changing times are asking us to be incredibly flexible on the one hand, but don't forget, you are a Christian in these times. So while the times are changing, God's truth doesn't change. And like we talked about on Sunday recently, we have an anchor for our souls. And it is the truth of God's word. It is the person of Jesus. We can, we, while everything else is going crazy in our culture, we can show calmness we can show firmness because we know the one that controls it all. So while we know all of those things, we are also going to be good citizens. And so as a result of that, we want to do exactly what we're being asked to do. So we are now um, suspending all on-campus ministries. We are suspending all of the growth groups for the next 15 days. So for now, we will broadcast our sermons every Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m. So you can go to our Facebook page, you can go to our YouTube page, you can go to our Instagram page, and you can find those there. They will start at 10 o'clock every Sunday morning, and then they will be available after that, like all of our other videos are. So since our, sermon, since our growth groups are sermon-based, once again, let me emphasize that we are asking all growth group leaders to suspend their growth groups. We want to make sure that we're compliant with what our government is asking us to do. And while the, the virus really doesn't affect younger people, we would hate for us, for, for people who are under 60 or who don't have pre-existing conditions, to get the virus, have it not really affect us very much, but then pass it to someone who we could really harm. So we really want to, to limit the interaction as much as possible. And so this is a time when you're going to see a lot of people giving into fear and uh, you're going to be tempted to do that as well. So let me just remind you that this is not a time for you to fear. This is a time for you to trust. This is a time for you to have faith in the Lord. He has seen you through your ultimate trial, which is your sin. And he's addressed that. He's fixed that completely. And if he's fixed the ultimate trial that we have than anyone could ever face, he can see us through this trial as well. And so let's trust him. But then at the same time, let's make sure that we maintain a fondness for one another and a fondness for our neighbors. Just because our neighbors are acting in ways that may not be helpful, it doesn't mean that we have to, and it doesn't mean that we have to project a, a sense of, of disappointment or, or even self-righteousness towards our neighbors. Let's love them. Let's find ways to care for them. Let's find ways to serve our neighbors and love them and show them what it looks like to be a Christian who's going through an international trial. I also well, I want to encourage you, maybe, you, maybe your growth group is 12 people normally, but maybe you could meet as six people, maybe just the men or just the women. Do those kinds of things. Be creative on ways to get together, to still disciple one another, talk to one another, pray with one another. Be creative. Think of ways you could do that. Also, we're asking you, please don't stop giving to our church. You'll be tempted to hoard not only material things, but you'll be tempted to hoard money. I just wanna remind you of your member covenant. I just wanna remind you all your pastors, we're gonna to continue to give, we're gonna to continue to serve. And so I just wanna make sure that, that to say that, and you can do that really easily on our website, redeemeraz.org. You can go there, you can sign up, you can give there, you can sign up for recurring giving. Really ask you, over the next 15 days, it's, you're gonna be tempted to hoard everything. And so I would just ask you please to consider that and uh, to give and to continue to give. 
Finally, when it comes to our member covenant, I'd encourage you to stay unified, to stay together, and continue to serve one another. We're, gonna, we're thinking of creative ways even for, for little teams of people to come to the church and serve. And so I want to encourage that. I want to encourage you to trust and pray for your leaders. These are unprecedented times, not only for government leaders, but for your church leaders. And we need wisdom, we need prayer, we need to be upheld during these times. And so I would ask maybe when you pray for your food every day, that you would add us to that. And just say, just add a little something that allows us to uh, to be a part of your, your normal daily, uh, multiple times a day prayer time. I wanna encourage you even though everything else is falling apart in our culture and there's all this fear and, and who knows what's going to happen next and, and a whole bunch of misinformation going on on social media, I want to remind you that there is no misinformation in God's word. And so make sure that you're continuing to spend time in that. If there's more time now that your kids are home, maybe daily devotions where you can, you can pray together and, and read God's word together. It doesn't need to be much. Five minutes, read a passage, pray, and then go off and do the things that you need to do. But, but don't forget that. When everything else is, is partial information or misinformation, there is nothing like that in God's word. So make sure that you're spending time there. And then finally, I want to ask you again to pray. Pray for the stoppage, the slowing down, and even the, the eradication of this virus. Pray for our government officials, both in the federal, state, local officials. All of them are scrambling now. You, you can just imagine. And so they're trying to take care of their own families as well as trying to take care of the, the larger population. So they need prayer. Pray for scientists who are working feverishly to try to find a vaccine and to try to, vaccine, try to test it on enough people so that it doesn't harm if it gets out there, but that, but that they're able to take care of as many people as possible and find the right vaccines, find the right treatments to help people. And then as I asked you to do yesterday, pray, pray, pray for the church. This is a time when God has used the church in powerful ways and in communities that are suffering. And so may this be a time when God uses us again. That'll take open hearts, that'll take willing minds, that'll take, that'll take people who care far more about how Jesus looks through this trial than our own even personal well-being. I'm reminded of, of Philippians chapter two all the time that we consider others more important than ourselves, that we don't only look out for our interests, but we, we look out for the interests of others. Now that is true, that is to be true within the church, but it is also to be the normal heartbeat of Christians. And so what I encourage all of you to do is to begin to get to know your neighbors, reach out to them, talk to them, and be a, a sense of, of joy, a sense of happiness as you're interacting with people in supermarkets and, and going through drive throughs at restaurants now. Be a source of joy. Be a source of, of love. Show them. Show them your Savior as we all go through this trial together. One last thing. While we know that this video is meant for our church family, we also know that many people that come here on Sundays aren't necessarily connected to us on social media, but they might be connected to you. So would you please consider sharing this video so that they can see how Redeemer Bible Church is responding to this uh, coronavirus pandemic. We wanna make sure that all the people that, that come here and would consider Redeemer their home, but maybe aren't following us on Facebook or Instagram, are able to see this video and know how we're responding. Now we're gonna have more videos coming to you over the next few days, so stay tuned to our Facebook page, stay tuned to our Instagram. We're gonna be, the pastors of Redeemer Bible Church wanna help you and shepherd you through this, and so we'll be doing this a lot more. So wanna make sure that you know that. We'll see you very soon. Take care.